Don't you just love violets in the spring when they pop up and look so pretty? So I decided to paint some. I'm starting with this little petal that's way in the back, and then I'll get my colors figured out. So I'm not even going to fuss with it much. So this is direct painting. You put it on as dark as you think it should be and then add detail later. And as always, you can check your darkness with this little tool. And it's pretty close at the bottom, but it has some darker streaks. Okay, let's move on to another petal. This petal has got a very light manganese blue color down here. Again, I'm trying to get it as dark as I want it to be. This one, I'm putting some of the uh, blue up further. And one thing to remember is that this does dry uh, lighter. But this one, I so I'm going back and taking some of that off because I noticed that there's some yellow down in there, and I like these little bits of yellow. Now this petal is considerably paler. So I've watered down some of my purple. Well, maybe a little bit too much. And it's darker at this end. Now just because you're attempting direct painting doesn't mean you won't have to go back and make things darker. That also happens. I'm gonna put in this blue that's on this side and then paint around it a bit. The whole rest of the petal is lighter than what we did at the bottom. So I'm going at it while it's wet. And these kind of brushes hold so much water that they stay wet for a long time. So if you haven't tried a quill brush, I would recommend it.
with these leaves, I'm not painting wet on wet, but I am keeping them wet as I move along so that it all blends together. I'm not putting in as much detail as the picture shows because I'm more interested in the detail in the flowers. I'm putting some grays up here but chances are that it will get some yellows in it too. And then it gets quite dark in here. I can get some of the colors from the flowers in here. Now, one of the things that needs to change is the water level in the bottle, which I already put um, at a slant, as if the bottle was at a slant. But it needs to change to the water being flat. I'm going to put the background in before I do any tweaking. I've been painting for a long time without stopping. And usually when you do that, you stop being able to see what's there. And I'll get these details around these petals in a minute. After I finish uh, tweaking the flowers and getting the values right in those, I'm going to draw in the shadow and show you how I would do that in a way that looks realistic, um, but we don't have any reference photo for. If you've never done it before, you might want to do a study on a little piece of paper and see what kind of shadow works out the best. that better. Now down here at this bend, it's just going to go way darker and there's going to be some darker spots there too and then going off of this page it's going to go way darker because we don't want it to take your eye right off the page. Now let's draw that shadow. So the jar, the the light's coming this way, 
so the jar would make a shadow. And then the leaf. And I'm kind of uh, imitating what's up there, even though really a shadow probably wouldn't follow it very closely. And then there'll be some spots that the light wouldn't shine through. I want to get the whole thing wet. I am going to let it float some. I'm going to try to get it moving. I'm just going to get some spritz into it. I'm afraid it'll go into those spaces though. Yeah, do a little bit. And then it's going to go out here. Okay, forget the spritzing idea. That's too wild. I don't know if you can see that running. It, it makes it softer. As you make it run different directions, it gets softer, softer look. And here where it floated past, I'm gonna give a cut to. Now it's very possible that I'll be putting more into this shadow later because I should have probably done my background first, so you might want to keep that in mind, because uh, I would like to add some variety of color into the background. I like these variegated backgrounds, and I don't see too many people that do this, so I don't know exactly where else you might learn it. Now up here, I'm not real crazy about it. I want it to have some, some type of a glow. Just we can put a little bit of those colors in. Now that pink, that's, um, that was magenta. Quinacridone magenta. Well, all of the all of the quinacridones are staining. So if you're doing a variegated background with them, you have to move across quickly so that they don't make these permanent lines, and your variegated look suddenly is uh, not attractive. I guess I'm just going to variegate with blue and purple over here that I need to get this glass looking more glassy. So I'm going to my picture and I'm going to get some bleed proof white on my palette with a very skinny tipped brush. And you want your brush to be really clean so that you don't contaminate your pile. And I'm going to just put it right on my palette like I do a paint. That's a get in here, this, this side needs to have something to define it, even though that glass doesn't. And so I'm going to make it white, and if I don't want it white, you can paint right over Bleed Proof White.
there's no straight lines showing in that photo, but most glass has some going down somewhere, and so I'm going to just uh, make it my... I'm just going to do it. <laughs> 